Leagues 4 was just announced as a sort of rerun of the most beloved league from the past, Trailblazer, but this time around there are a lot of new tasks, relics, and even areas, and a ton of updates have happened since the first Trailblazer. So I'm here to fill you in on an updated Trailblazer regions guide. I made a video like this in the past and although I enjoyed making that video, it didn't age well and there's a lot different this time around anyway. I'll leave timestamps in the description for each section and a bunch of links that could be helpful. This video will mainly just be the pros and cons of each area to help you decide which areas you want to pick. This is just a basic list of the most notable things in each region. I did a lot of research for this, so I really hope this helps a lot of people. Also, I'll put any updates in a pinned comment as soon as we learn more stuff. There is no set date for the league, but they did say winter 2023, so it'll likely start in December this year. Another thing to note is that we will once again only have three area unlocks, aside from the free areas we start in. The first area on this list is Mythsalin. You will start with Mythsalin again, but here are the most notable pieces of content you can find in this area. For PVM, there is Sire and other abyssal creatures that drop whips and some other nice weapons, Bryophyta and Obor. You'll have access to Fossil Island Wyverns, which have some nice supply drops and have the chance of dropping a Wyvern Visage. In this area, you can also find Leviathan, but this will probably require having the desert unlocked to access it. For skilling, there's a lot of content here. You can train any skill at a low level in Mistalin, so there is a lot of beginner content. There are three Slayer Masters here that are low to mid level. You have access to the Water, Earth, and Cosmic Altars, as well as Guardians of the Rift, but this will probably require the desert. There are seven farming patches in total in Mistalin, one hops patch, two tree patches, and one bush. The two seaweed patches and and three hardwood patches on Fossil Island, and a Belladonna patch. Other content you can find here includes all of Fossil Island, Sanares, the Enchanted Valley, Soul Wars, and the surrounding Isle of Souls. Dorgish Khan requires access to Asgarnia, or at least it did last time, and Lithkrin will only be accessible if you have the Fremenic area. Overall, Missilin is a very beginner-friendly area with lots of low and mid-level content. Karamja is also a free area you'll have from the start. For PVM, there are the Tazar, which have some nice gear drops, metal dragons, fight caves, and the inferno. For skilling, there is the Slayer Master Duradel, Brimhaven Agility Arena, Teaks and Mahognies, and the Nature Altar. There are three farming spots in total here. A fruit tree, Kalquat, and spirit tree, although you need Kandran to access spirit trees. Next is Asgarnia, a large area with a variety of content. For PVM, you have all of the God Wars dungeon, although next will likely require the desert. Cerberus, who drops some really good boot upgrades, skeletal wyverns, and giant mole, and the Whisperer, which will likely require the desert. There is a lot of skilling content here. You have the Crafting Guild, Mining Guild, Rogue's Den, Motherlode Mine, four rune crafting altars, Mahogany Homes, although it might not be accessible, 7 farming patches in total, an allotment group which includes 2 allotment patches, a flower patch, and a herb patch, 2 regular tree patches, 1 bush, 1 hops patch, a disease-free herb patch in the troll stronghold, and a spirit tree patch which requires Kandarin. And here you have access to the Warrior's Guild and the Max Cape. Asgarnia includes all of the troll area except for Wise and Pest Control. Fremenic doesn't have as much skilling, but it has a lot of other content. With this unlocked, you have access to Adamant and Rune Dragons in Lithkrin, the Dagnoth Kings with their best-in-slot rings, Vorkath, Basilisk Knights, Muspa, and the Duke, which again likely requires the desert. For skilling content, you have Kingdom Management to give you a lot of supplies, Lunar Spells that can help a lot with skilling, Blast Furnace, Penguin Agility with a high pet chance, and three farming patches in total, the Weiss Herb Patch, which is disease-free, one bush, and a Spirit Tree Patch, which is not accessible without Kandarin. Kandarin has a lot of chill content, not a lot of PVM. 
For the PVM you do have in this area, you get Kraken, Demonic Gorillas, Myth Dragons, and the Smoke Devil. For skilling, you have Neve the Slayer Master, Fishing Trawler, Fishing Guild, Orania, Barbarian Fishing, and Tower of Life for the Red Spider's Eggs. You have 8 farming patches in total, 2 hops, 3 fruit trees, 1 bush, 2 allotment groups which include herb patches, and a regular tree. Here you also have access to the magic guild to quickly buy runes, barbarian assault, castle wars, ape toll for the agility course and bursting, nightmare zone for afk training but is not useful for points. In the last trailblazer league, you just use gp to imbue items instead of points so that will likely be the case again. You also have Iben's staff, spirit tree unlocks, the range cape which is a decent replacement for avas if you don't have access to it, and the myths guild if you also have Frimnik. The desert has a lot more content this time around. You have Calphite Queen and Dust Devils just like before, but this time you have Tombs of a Masket, which has a lot of really good drops and is easier than the other two raids. Here you also have access to the Sorceress's Garden, Blackjacking, and Pyramid Plunder for some really fast thieving XP. Agility Pyramid, the Fire Altar, Mage Training Arena, Giant's Foundry, Temperos. Of course you have Ancient Spell which could be really helpful depending on what content you do, and only one farming patch which is a cactus patch. With the desert, you will likely have Desert Treasure 2 auto-completed, but since you only have three unlockable areas, you will not be able to fight all of the Desert Treasure 2 bosses, which means you won't be able to complete the Soul Reaper axe. Maybe they'll make DT2 auto-completed with other areas other than the desert, but we don't know right now. But again, I'll add updates in the comments as they come out. If you pick Turanin, you also might want to consider the desert for easy access to darts for your blowpipe if you plan on getting one. Next is Mauritania, one of the best areas for PVMers. Here we have Barrows, Cave Horrors for Black Masks, Firewatch, PVM, and Pickpocketing, Grotesque Guardians, Nightmare, and the Theater of Blood. Here you can get a lot of good gear upgrades. Aside from the PVM, you have Sepulchre, the Slayer tower, one mid-level slayer master, day alt mining, avas if you also have asgarnia, the true blood altar, and updated shades of morton. There are four farming patches here, an allotment group, a mushroom patch, and harmony has one allotment and a herb patch that requires the elite Mauritania diary. Another area with some great pvm content is Turanin. Here you have Zolra, although you'll want to keep in mind that it may be hard to access access darts for your blowpipe without the desert. Fletching darts requires the quest Tourist Trap, although you can add feathers to dart tips without the quest. There are some monsters and bosses that drop darts, but it will be difficult to get a lot of them. Here you also have the Gauntlet, which doesn't require any gear prior, and the Ironworth Dungeon, which has Dark Beasts. You have some high-level skilling content, including Crystal Implings, Elf Thieving, Zalcano, the Death Altar, and and red chins. Here you have three farming patches, a fruit tree, allotments, and a flower patch but no herb, and a crystal tree. And next is the wilderness with a ton of pvm content. Keep in mind that the wilderness will probably work the same way it did the last couple of leagues, which means there will be pvp but your items will drop to your gravestone and you'll be able to reclaim them, so deaths aren't quite as dangerous as the main game wilderness. The main motivation for PKing will just be to fight for access to something like bosses. Here you have the Crazy Archaeologist, Chaos Fanatic, Chaos Elemental, Callisto, Venonatus, Fedion, and their solo variants, Scorpia, the Corporeal Beast, KBD, and Lava Dragons and Black Dragons. Here you also have the Mage Arena with the best in slot mage capes, the Resource Area, Abyss Rune Crafting, the Chaos Altar, Black Chins, Black Salamanders, and Sam Rack Wines, Laren's Chest, the Fountain of Rune, Ferox can easily restore your stats.
stats, and Last Man Standing has some nice rewards. There is no farming content here, and it might be difficult to train some skills. Seiya was not included at all in the last Trailblazer League because it was right after Twisted League, but it seems it will be unlockable in this league, so I'll include some notable stuff about Zaya. For PVM, you have Chambers of Seric, Hydra, Seracnus, Scotizo, Konar Slayer in general. The Brimstone Chest has some pretty good drops, Blizzard Man Shamans for the Dragon Warhammer, and the Catacombs for Slayer. Here you also have Vardorfus if you have the Desert unlocked. For skilling content, you have Winter Todd for not only the best fire making XP, but also great construction and decent fletching and herblore training. Blood and Soul runecrafting, Archaeus spells which gives access to ensouled heads, the woodcutting and farming guilds, Tithe Farm, Blast Mine, Mess Hall, Stealing Artifacts, Aerial Fishing, and the Forthos Dungeon which has some unique training methods and PVM training. Here there are three farming patches outside of the farming guild, an allotment group with the herb patch being protected with Ocidious favor, vine patches, and a spirit tree patch. Seiya has a wide variety of content and is definitely something to consider. If after all that you're still stuck wondering which areas to pick, here are some things to consider to help you decide. What kind of content do you enjoy the most? Skilling, PVM, minigames, clues, etc. What is your end goal? Maxing, gear, and PVM? First think about what area has the most content you enjoy or the content that's most appealing to you even if you don't like the rest, and you'll probably be able to pick your other areas based around that. Even if you're planning on going for the Dragon Cup, you should focus on just having fun. Keep in mind that this time around, the point thresholds are static. You won't have to be constantly chasing Dragon Cup. Odds are you will be able to get a lot of points even if you prefer skilling and don't do PVM or the other way around. There will be a ton of tasks, so there's something for everyone. If you really want to do Gauntlet but can't stand Zolra, you can still pick Sharanin. You can probably easily get Adamant or Rune Cup if you play enough even if you only do some of the content in your areas. After that, ask yourself if there is something specific you need to help you achieve your goals. Do you need darts for your blowpipe or barrows gear in order to start in-game PVM? What are the skilling methods you'll have access to? I encourage you to do some research on the areas you're considering picking, if you want to be concise of course. At the end of the day, it's just about having fun. I'll leave some links in the description like past Trailblazer spreadsheets that show you what your best in slot gear is in each area, and other helpful stuff. I'll also update this with more links if anything else comes out, and I'll also leave a link to the official League Discord server where you can discuss things or ask for advice with other fellow League enjoyers. There's a lot of nice resources there, so I recommend joining. That's all for this video, I hope this was helpful. Apologies if I missed anything, I tried my best to do my research and also get this video out as soon as possible. Let me know your thoughts or your League plans, I'm still thinking about mine, but I'm really excited to have a second chance at Trailblazer and try out a different route. Thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a great day and all your League wishes come true. Goodbye friends!